I am happy to be participating in this Midsummer Streamathon, which is sponsored by Art Curious by MNW. I am not a streamer. I do not do lives. And the reason for that is not because I don't want to. It's because I live very rural in North Georgia, and I do not have the internet um, bandwidth or the type of service that I can do that. So this Streamathon is going to run Monday through Saturday. And each day there will be an interpretation of a specific item. And you can see here today is fabric. So it is Thursday, August 15th, and we are working with fabric, stitching, tatting, and tie-dye. And I'm going to throw some paper in from another day. So my name is Peggy. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I am a very eclectic um, creator. I like to explore a lot of different types of mediums. For today, I have these double X white t-shirts, men's v-neck that I buy in bulk. I wear them in my shop. They're big, they're baggy, they're bulky, they go over my tights, they hang way down below my derriere, <coughs> and they're just comfortable. I don't care if I get coffee on them, if I get paint on them, it does not matter. So this is all stained up. It's one I've been wearing for quite a while. Like I said, it's a 2XL. And you can see the paint stains on here. You can probably, usually when I splatter paint, there's little tiny paint splatters all over. I drink a tremendous amount of coffee. I generally wind up with coffee on them at some particular point in the day. I'm going to take this large shirt and fold it in half. I'm going to match up the um, arms, if you will, the sleeves, I guess would be the better word for that, and try to get this as flat as I possibly can. You can see I have my small iron, iron out here. Um, I'm not using any steam. <clears throat> I'm just trying to get as many of the wrinkles out as I possibly can. We'll stretch that out and also match up the hem. Of course, this hem is kind of folded over and you know, these things have been washed and washed and washed and worn in my shop. You can see I have one on um, today. Um, um, like I told you, this is this is my my studio outfit, a pair of black tights, a big bulky white t-shirt and a pair of tennis shoes that have paint on them and you know they're they're just clothes that I don't care about. I don't care if I ruin, I don't care if they get paint on them and I'm more comfortable that way. So let me iron this out and now that I have it folded in half you can see the V there at the front. You can see the two sleeves are tight. Um, just going to press it a bit Okay, I think that's probably pretty good. So I'm going to take that top piece and fold it back on itself. I'm going to press it once again. And pressing these folds just helps get the dye where you would like the dye to be. Or it keeps the white as white as it can be. I'm going to fold that sleeve in. Now I'm going to flip this over and do the same thing on the other side. And get it as 
many wrinkles out as I can. And this is a shibori technique or a shibori tie-dye fold that I am utilizing today. But I'm not going to use an indigo dye, so that's why I'm reluctant to use the word shibori, but it is a shibori type fold. So now I have that folded in force, if you will. Just securing my folds with that iron. And now let's start with a flag fold. That's what I call it, a flag fold, because this, this reminds me of folding the flag when I was a kid and Girl Scouts and so forth. So I'm going to put that up on its diagonal, fold it back under on itself, back up again, back under, and back up again and back under. And now we have everything neatly folded. You can see my cat is helping. That's Kurt. And I'm going to pull out some rubber bands and we'll rubber band this on the two edges. So this is going to make kind of a geometric pattern. So let's grab the rubber bands and we'll put them on each end here. I'll do that once again on this side. I'm going to probably double up on the rubber bands because they're a little thinner than I would like for them to be. Get that on the edge. And let's just do one more. And there. So now let's get our dye pot ready. Let's put these rubber bands away and grab my dye pot and we'll get that ready right here on my desk. So I have been saving onion skins and anytime I cut an onion that outer peel I put in a baggie as you can see. So I have a bunch of onion skins that I have been saving. What I am putting in the pot is some alum. So you know, you can buy this uh, cooking grade alum at the grocery store in the spice aisle. I buy it in bulk because I do like to use natural dyes. And the alum acts as a mordant. It just helps the fabric accept the dye. So we want the, these onion skins to give us a nice... Um, mustardy, um, brown mustard, if you will, color. And in order for this cotton fabric to accept that dye, I'm putting a little alum in the water and soaking that uh, fabric in that before I put my onion skins in. So now I'm going to dump my onion skins in and I'm going to use all of them that I have because I will use this today for the t-shirt and then I will use it again for paper or for dyeing strings or whatever, but I'm, I won't throw it away after I use it today. And here are the rest of my onion skins. I'm going to make sure that is down and soaked and all these onion skins are wet. And then I have a single burner that I use in my workshop. 
and I have an outdoor space that I am going to take this to and turn that burner on and put this on a boil and I am going to allow this to simmer boil for a couple of hours. I want to make sure that I get a really nice color. Now take a look at that color that I received. I've pulled this out of the boiling water, uh, allowed it to cool down a little bit, cooled it down with some cool water, and look at the beautiful color that we received off of these onion skins. There's no fabric dye involved in this. This is 100% natural dye. The only thing that you have that would be considered non-natural would be the alum that I used as my mordant. But take a look at how the color um, permeated throughout this white cotton and you have that geometric type pattern that was created with the um, fold and I'm really happy with it. So I think that I'm going to pull, I think I have about 12 of these t-shirts that, that I keep in stock and they're all kind of um, ratty from wearing over here in my workshop. So I think I'm going to pull all of these out and, and I might give one a try with some black beans. I have um, some natural dyes up here that I could use as well. So this could be kind of fun. And I hope that you enjoyed the my fabric interpretation today. I wanted to just go ahead and do something with those onion skins. And I love the color that it gave us. So let's take a look at that shirt. I'm going to hang it out on the line on the deck of my workshop here. You can see my little barn in the in the distance we have one horse so that is her spot and this is her pasture behind behind my little workshop but that uh, t-shirt will hang there to die to die <laughs> to dry i've already dyed it it will hang there to dry this is a view behind my my workshop that's the mountains in the distance but it's kind of a cloudy day and you can't see much but there we go. And I am very happy with the result that I got from that uh, onion skin dye. And while I have those onion skins out, I think we will use the onion skins to echo dye some paper. This is grocery store alum. It's bought right off of the spice rack or right out of the spice area in the grocery store aisles. I am putting some hot water in the alum to dissolve it and get it ready to paint on the paper. You can see that I have uh, created a um, vessel that I am going to dye the paper in. I just have an old roasting pan with some bricks to hold my paper up off of the bottom to prevent it from burning. I am taking a paintbrush and painting the alum and water mixture on each sheet of paper and then just free-handedly laying the onion skins down to allow them to dye that paper wherever they touch it, essentially. And what you get on paper that you didn't get when we boiled the onion skins in water is this will give you a remnant or an impression of the onion skin itself on the paper. So you'll get all of those little veins, all of the little lines that are typically in that onion skin will transfer themselves to the paper. I'm using watercolor paper, cardstock, um, just plain white cardstock paper as well. I'm just stacking it, coating each with the alum to utilize as that mordant to help the onion skins, help that dye um, 
work with that paper. What you see here is two sheets of aluminum that my husband cut for me a long time ago and I'm using that to sandwich my paper. So I've made a sandwich out of paper, onion skins, paper, onion skins, paper. All of that paper has been coated with that mordant alum and water. I am tying it together tight to hold each sheet of paper tightly to the one next to it. And I am utilizing uh, just a t-shirt that has been shredded. I'm getting it as tight as I can. And I think these t-shirt, you know, t-shirt pieces might come out pretty nice too. So I'm wrapping some of them in the iron. I'm adding some iron into this. This I wanted, I was going for more of a vintage look when I dyed this. I'm going to dump the rest of that alum water in there, there to have the mordant inside my water. I'm putting in some black tea bags to hopefully give that paper a vintage look in addition to the onion skin dye. And I'm just opening them up and getting them ready to put in. Now I'm not doing this inside my workshop or inside my studio. I'm doing this on my deck. So I've pulled out my old um, the camp stove that we, we keep stored in a, in a little um, closet, if you will, on the deck. And I am going to fill this with water and let that begin to boil. And I boiled it for a good hour. Now I've taken it into the kitchen. I'm going to unwrap it in my kitchen sink and there are the t-shirt here is the first sheet of paper and what I was kind of going for with that tea didn't really work I think one of the things that I had done is I had it tied so tightly that um, tea couldn't leak down inside or get inside the paper so you can see some areas where it looks like it got a little bit of that tea stain, but it's not really, um, it didn't really give me that coffee stained or tea stained paper look underneath the onion skins. But this is what I received with the onion skins, and I'm pretty happy with that. I think once I take it, cut it into tags, cut it into cards, ATCs, all the different types of things that you can do, it'll be fine and and it will work great if i want to get that vintage look i'll go ahead and soak this paper i'll let it dry and then i'll dip it in some either coffee or tea to create that vintage more vintage appeal but i think the onion skins create just a great yellowy color. I think they look great on the t-shirt and I'm happy with the paper that I also received. This is everything laid out on my dining room table to dry and a few little close-ups. And it almost, you know, I look at it and I almost, it, it makes me think of butterscotch candies. It, that's that butterscotch, that butterscotch yellow, if you will. And I, you can almost see those butterscotch candy wrappers in the impressions that the onion skins left on the paper. So I may have to do something butterscotchy with, <laughs> with this paper. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Tell me how you would have done this different or, or what you think of the onion skin dye just randomly um, done like that on the on the paper. A lot of times I, I will just use boil the onion skins in the water and then coat my paper in that yellowy water and get that nice yellowy look on the paper but who knows. So it's always good to try something different, I think. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for participating. 
in this midsummer streamathon. I hope you are enjoying all of the um, individuals that are participating. And I'll give you just a little bit more information on that here as well. Today was day four and we were doing the fabric, the, the stitching, tatting, and tie-dyeing. I did my fabric with the onion skins and then bled over into using those onion skins for paper. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope you have been able to follow along with some of the other creatives that are participating in this Midsummer uh, Streamathon. They're doing a lot of lives. There's a lot of things going on. It has been a tremendous amount of work for Miriam, Nancy, and Raul who are hosting this. So I hope you give them your love by subscribing to their channels and making this Streamathon a success. I will say bye for now.